Hey guys, Yuji here, and today I'm here with a guide on how to deal with Double Caster. Now, as I'm sure you all know by now, the Double Caster meta is here, and Rhett really does not do the best into it. Double Caster has always been one of Rhett's worst mashups, so to help with that, I'm here with some tips on how to beat it. Now, all the things I'm saying can be helpful for classes that aren't Rhett, so even if you don't play Rhett, stick around, it can help you out. So the most important thing to know when playing against double caster is when to go in and when to run. A lot of the time you end up losing to these comps because you chase for too hard for too long. You need to try to find the perfect middle ground where you avoid their big CDs and also keep up good pressure. So first off is when to run. Now there are two types of running. There are hard resets and just quickly getting behind the pillar during a go. You usually want a hard reset when they pop major cooldowns and you don't really have a good way to trade with them. To help with these, here are all the major cooldowns for the popular casters that you need to watch out for and how to deal with them. Destro Lock. So first off, they have Dark Soul. It pretty much just gives them a ton of crit for 20 seconds and that increases the damage of Chaos Bolt. So it's pretty scary. It's a two, it's a two minute cooldown, so it's pretty easy to avoid or trade with, but you do want to get away from it as soon as possible. Next up is Decimating Bolt or Soul Rock. Destro Locks play both of these and they are both good indicators of when they are trying to do their burst. Decimating Bolt causes the next two incinerates they do to do increased damage and also do execute damage. And Soul Rock gives them haste, which makes it so that they can get off their Chaos Bolts a lot faster. Then, other than that, you also have to watch out for their set bonus. After casting 10 Chaos Bolts or Reign of Fires, their next one is going to be an instant cast. It shows this as a stacking buff, so you kind of just have to watch out for it and just be aware when it gets to around 8 or 9, since they could be setting up to deal massive damage pretty soon. So now let's talk about how to trade with these cooldowns a bit. So if all they have up is Sword or Decimated Bolt, you can usually just trade like a small cooldown like Wall or just something from your healer and survive their go, but if they have one of those plus 8 or 9 stacks of their set bonus, you're going to probably have to trade something a bit bigger. Then if they have Dark Swap, you should try to lock them down long enough for you to be able to line of sight. You'll usually end up having to trade bigger, big cooldowns like Aegis plus Wall or even Bubble sometimes. Next up is Aflock. They once again have Dark Soul, however they have a different kind of Dark Soul. This one gives them Haste, which is incredibly strong for Aflocks. It also has a 2 minute cooldown and lasts for 20 seconds. Then they always pretty much run Soul Rot. Soul Rot is a massive dot that if done well can be applied to your entire team. It also allows them to drain life every target afflicted by it which deals a ton of damage and also it gives them haste. So now what you should do to trade. If they have Soul Rot up, you want to try to stop their drain life and maybe pop a couple of small defensives to counteract it. Or maybe just kind of play more defensively and heal a lot more. Then if they also have Dark Soul up, uh, you definitely need to stop the Drain Life since it's going to destroy your entire team. Uh, then you need to kind of just run, pop a few defensives, just try to peel the go as much as possible since they end up doing pretty unhealable damage. So now let's talk about Frost Mages. So Frost Mages, they have Deathborn. Deathborn is a short cast that causes their Frost Bolts to deal more damage. This buff lasts for around 40 seconds depending on how good their conoid is. This is a 3 minute cooldown, so once it's down you really don't have to worry about it for a while. However, their Covenant can cause it to proc for 8 seconds whenever they land a Frostbolt, but it's kind of random and it's not as scary as the actual Deathborn. You want to try to run away as best as you can when they press this, since every single time that they press damage while having Deathborn up, it just increases their damage. They get a stacking spell damage buff. Next up is Icy Veins, it increases their haste by 30%. This can also last up to 30 seconds depending on what talent they choose. The cooldown is a bit hard to track since it's reduced whenever they land crits, but it should still be over 2 minutes, and they usually try to pair it with their Deathborn. Now if all they have is Deathborn up, or if all they have is Icy Veins up, you should be able to easily trade with the damage and stay offensive, but if they pop both, you should try to run out of line of sight as fast as possible, since if they ramp up enough, you'll probably be forced to pop some really major cooldowns. But other than that, that's kind of just all you have to worry about. Next up is Fire Mage, um, Combust. It increases their crit their, and their mastery in a ton, and just overall just increases the damage because of their conduits and potentially their legendary. This is the main thing you need to worry about. Their tier set also increases the damage they deal during it and its duration. The cooldown is a bit hard to track since it's increased when they crit most of their abilities, but for the most part, it'll end up being around 90 seconds. 
If they pop combust, quickly try to trade cooldowns and then lock them out, purge as fast as possible, or just run away. Now we have Spreest. So Spreest has a Void Eruption. It's a short cast that puts the Priest into Void Form, which pretty much just does significantly more damage. It's a 1.5 minute cooldown, so watch out for it. If they get it off, be aware of the damage and potentially trade cooldowns if you have to. Next up is Unholy Transfusion. It explodes in an AoE and applies dots to all the targets hit. This dot does a ton of damage, so either play safe when it's applied or try to dispel it as soon as possible since it is a disease and can be dispelled by Paladins. Try not to stack as much as possible whenever it's off CD since it does more damage the more people that are hit by it. Next up is Ellie Shaman. Um, and the first thing we'll talk about is Vesper Totem, which is kind of a really annoying meme spec that people are playing. So it's their Covenant ability, and it sort of absorbs the damage and healing that they deal while it's up, and then they can teleport it anywhere they want, and then explodes in a massive amount of damage, and can actually just completely one-shot you for some reason. Uh, it's pretty easy to counter. Uh, since if you notice, you can kill it pretty quickly, but they can kind of move it around the map and make it really hard for you to easily kill it, so you could just try to potentially run away from it. Um, it has a 60 second cooldown, so you just be aware of that whenever it's up. Next up is Stormkeeper, it's a short cast that makes the next two lightning bolts deal more damage and instant cast. This can be a huge burst window, especially when paired with Lava Burst Prox, and it has a 60 second cooldown. Next up is Sky Fury Totem, it increases the damage and healing of all critical hits for the Shaman and its allies by 20%. This only works on magic damage though, so you don't really have to worry about it for something like a warrior. Uh, but you need to try to kill it as soon as possible whenever it's up. Uh, it also has a 40 second cooldown. Now for Sky Fury Totem, it's pretty simple. Kill it as soon as possible. It dies pretty quick, but if they place it well and keep you away from it, you may have to trade cooldowns for it. Next, Vesper Totem. It's pr pretty similar to Sky Fury. Uh, but this time, if you don't kill it, you either need to get away as soon as possible or pop a major cooldown to prevent yourself from getting one-shotted. And then lastly, there's Stormkeeper. Um, if they get the cast off, make sure you either have cooldowns trade or get to the pillar. The burst usually isn't instantly after casting. They usually want to try to get, you know, Lava Burst procs and then put their Sky Fury totem up and then just launch all the damage. So try to be aware of that and prevent it as well as possible. Next up is Boomy. Now I'm going to be completely honest here, I don't really know exactly how Boomy damage works. I just know a couple of their big cooldowns that you have to watch out for, and those are Celestial Alignment and Convoke. So let's talk about Celestial Alignment first. Uh, it puts the Boomy into both of their Eclipses and also gives them a 10% haste buff. It lasts for 20 seconds and it's a 3 minute cooldown. This is their main offensive cooldown usually, so you gotta watch out for it. But even without it, they still do some pretty good consistent damage and can burst you pretty randomly if they can get some star surges off. Next up is Convoke, and I'm sure you all know how it works by now. It's a channel that casts spells from their spell book over a couple of seconds, and for some reason, 90% of the time, it's gonna be three star searchers in a row, each hitting for 20k and just absolutely one-shotting you. It's pretty obvious when they're running this, since you can easily observe if they have Kindred Spirits, for main Kyrian, or if they have a Necro Shield for Necrolord. If you don't see either of those, watch out for it. It's a three minute cooldown. So once you shut it down, you should be good for a while. Also, most good boomies don't tend to run it all the time, but if they do, just be aware of it and trade cooldowns efficiently. Against Celestial Alignment, you need to just pop defensive accordingly. Sometimes it does a ton of damage, sometimes it doesn't really do the most like burst damage. It's usually really scary when paired up with their other DPS's damage. Just be aware of how much damage is going out and just pop cooldown accordingly. Then for Convoke, um, just quickly trade cooldowns, try to interrupt it, and then line. Uh, it can be kind of hard to interrupt it at times since they often play with classes that prevent them from being interrupted, like h bows. Also, if they have the new trinket making them immune to the first two CCs, you need to work with your teammates to try to prevent it. But yeah, that is about it for the big scary buttons from all the other casters. So now let's talk about what to do when you go offensive. For this, I'm gonna mainly be talking about Mage Lock since it's the most popular combo in the game right now. But for the most part, all of these tips will work against any double caster team. So the hardest part about going offensive against double casters is how much CC they have. For Mage Lock, they have Roots, Fear, Sheep, DB, Co Coil, Infernal Stun, sometimes they have Shadow Fury, and then they have whatever CC their healer has also. Then, to get away from you, they also have Port, Gate, Blink, Altar, and this can be really hard to deal with. 
The most important thing against these teams is trying to cross CC as well as possible. If you're playing Rhett Warrior, your usual strat is to Hodge Kill Target, Stormbow Healer. This doesn't always work against Mage Lock though. Mage tends to run Normal Blink, which gets them out of stuns. Also, whoever you aren't healing will be peeling you a ton. So what you do, so what do you do? With a mage, you try to force their blink or lock them arcane before you go. This will make your stun sit full. The only problem with the latter is they usually run resolve. So whoever didn't kick arcane needs to save their kick or some type of CC to break resolve before you hodge. Then for the warlock, you either need the warrior to fear them or have your healer do something. If you're playing with a Holy Priest, they can easily chastise them, then fear off or try to fear the healer off. If you have an Archer, they can bash clone. If you have an Arsham, they can try to hex, or if they can save Shear or Grounding or Tremor to stop them, that also works too. You kind of get the idea. Triple CC is key in having a strong go against any caster cleave. Next up is figuring out how to kill. So against Mage Lock, you can either go the Mage or the Lock. When playing Red Hunter, I like to go the Mage, since Hunters do a ton of damage to Mages. Also, Mages tend to play Frost in that comp, so you can often force cooldowns a lot easier against them. But for something like Red War, you can go either. If you're playing with a Fear Warrior, I think Lock can potentially be the best target. This is mainly because you can stick on the target a lot easier than the Mage. However, just like with Red Hunter, you can easily force cooldowns on the Mage and potentially cheese them. Uh, lock can be a bit hard to kill since they are quite a bit tankier. You also have to you also have to break through unending resolve every minute, which can be tough. However, since we're playing Necro, this doesn't matter as much since you can go outside of the one minute cooldown like we were restricted to as Kyrian. Also, if you're playing a long game and you get pretty far into dampening, the lock tends to be a way better target since it's a lot harder for them to outheal your damage and you have a lot better uptime on the lock since it's a lot harder for them to get away rather compared to a mage. Now against priest lock, your kill target is a bit harder. If you want to go the priest, you need to consistently go the priest since if you don't go them for one go, they end up getting all their cooldowns back. So the play could be to just run at lock all game. The priest also has less ways to peel compared to a warlock, but for the most part, the game will end up being pretty long. You can also look at healers as long as you have cross CC for the priest since MD can instantly end your goes. Against priest mage, I'd recommend going mage, but make sure you cross CC priest. Against mage Ellie, it depends. For the most part, you want to swap on cooldowns, but if you force something big, swap to the other and then swap back whenever it's down. Then focus on whoever blows more cooldowns. Once again, you can also go healer. Now, when can we go in? For the most part, whenever they don't have major cooldowns rolling, you can generally survive their consistent pressure pretty well, as long as you play smart and notice when their small burst windows are coming up. But when they have damage rolling and a CC chain on your healer, you need to get out or trade efficiently. If you don't have any cooldowns to trade, it can be better to just wait for them rather than keeping up the pressure, but it's still situational. But yeah, that's about it. If you have any specific questions you want to ask about, leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them. I hope this helped. Peace.